So in order to be able to really understand the spinal cord and spinal cord injuries, it's important that you have a true understanding of the anatomy. Now I know that you are already aware of the anatomy, but let's take a re refresh. So we have a nice oval shape. We're going to call this the back or the dorsum. We're going to call this anterior or ventral. Okay. So first we have to draw in the white matter versus the gray matter. Easiest way to do that is essentially make a X right across. Now, when you take a look at this, what you see is the inside here is the gray matter, outside white matter. You're looking at a cross-sectional view. Now, when I look at this, I like to look at the gray matter here as signifying a U in the middle and an L on the outside. Now, the rationale for that, why is that so important? We look at the U, that tells you upper extremity right here in the middle. Lower extremity along the lateral borders. Okay? That's going to be important when we come back to our spinal syndromes. But first, let's just uh, continue on a little bit. So with blue marker, I'm going to go over our afferents. All right? So our dorsal side, we're going to have our dorsal column. Nice, big, large dorsal bundle. We also, without getting into details for now, can kind of go through and identify all of our different, uh, different areas. So essentially, safe to say, that's going to be the afferents. For the most part, afferent is on the posterior portion of the cord. Good way to remember that is efferent, which is your effective abilities in front of you, is what we, where we utilize our efferent. We often push, pull, perform all of our activities daily, daily living in front of us, so our action is in front of us. Behind us, that's the sensation. So our sensation's in blue. The bulk of our sensation comes through that posterior cord. Now, for the motor. So in red, we could put our motor. Now, motor's not quite as obvious, right? So motor's a little, much smaller little areas here. Okay, and then we have a, a lateral cord here. Okay, so the basic anatomy here, and you can review with your uh, digital images in the iBook, but the basic anatomy breaks us down into having our dorsal column, which is the main sensory branch, a few other fringe sensory areas uh, on the lateral borders, and then a majority of our motor being anterior. Okay, so why does it matter? Upper versus lower, dorsal versus anterior? Well, this is where our injuries come in. Okay, so the first injury we'll talk about is one of the most common cervical injuries, which is the central cord syndrome. Central cord syndrome essentially damages the center portion of the cord. So when you have that central portion of the cord damaged, what you have is upper extremities are affected, person loses, involvement, loses upper extremity activity, as well as upper extremity sensation, but the lower extremities, which are around the perimeter, are preserved and they do not lose that. The uh, common name for this is a walking para, a walking paraplegia. Okay. Now, when we look at the next version, we have posterior cord syndrome. So now that you know the anatomy, what would happen if you were to have an accident that affected your posterior cord or your dorsal column? You're going to lose sensation. You're not going to lose motor. You're going to lose sensation. So in posterior cord syndrome, you lose uh, your sensation, but not your motor. The opposite, anterior cord syndrome. You damage the anterior portion of the cord. Now you've damaged all this red area. That's motor. So now you will have lack of ability to move, but you will have full sensation. So a person with anterior cord syndrome will have the ability to function with their upper extremities and lower extremities. However, or I should say the level below their injury will lose the ability to move. Okay. Now, uh, Spinothalamic tract, which brings us to brown saccard syndrome. Okay, so our spinothalamic tracts uh, are on the lateral borders, but most importantly with uh, brown saccard syndrome, you essentially take a line straight down the middle and damage one side completely. Okay, now to understand this, let me move over a little bit, and let's go over our spine. So if this is our skull and our vertebrae and our spinal cord. Okay, so spinothalamic tract comes down through the brain at the red nucleus, straight down, and at each level, essentially, it will cross over and continue down. And this happens two segments below 
each nerve root. Okay? So what you'll see in an injury like this is if you were to obliterate one complete side of your spinal cord. And let's just clear this up. Now, the spinothalamic tract is not going to affect, so lack of spinothalamic tract here is not going to affect this side from a pain and sensory and temperature standpoint. However, because it crosses over, it will affect this side. So with brown saccard syndrome, on one side of your body, you will lose pain sensation and temperature. On the opposite side of your body, you will lose motor. And essentially, you look right up here, our primary uh, anterior cord, this corticospinal tract, goes straight down. It does not cross over. Spinothalamic, however, it does cross over. So when you sever half the cord, this side here is still intact. It continues down. But the spinothalamic that was over here no longer crosses over and comes down. So this side would maintain efferent but lose pain, temperature, and uh, sensation.